Welcome to the Essential 99 Punctuation Rules for Court Reporters, video number 10, the comma, part 3. I'm Ken Wick. Let's get started. This uh, book, or this video, <laughs> covers the comma, and specifically ebook rules number 8 and 9, which are uh, non-essential clauses and phrases, and appositives. So rule number eight, use a comma for the end of sentence or commas, mid-sentence, to separate a non-essential, and then there's a list of four of these. So for non-essential subordinate clause, or non-essential verbal phrase, or a non-essential prepositional phrase, or a non-essential transitional expression, or a non-essential parenthetical expression. The key thing to remember about this rule is this rule is just really a a, a, um, a a restatement of the basic rule which I covered when I covered non-essential elements. All non-essential elements are always separated with punctuation. So that's the basic rule. So I've just listed actually just four things that are non-essential or if they're non-essential you separate them. But I just want to go over some examples. So some subordinate clause examples. Uh, Farm Co's main office, which is located in Ohio, has an excellent reputation. Now this right here, which is located in Ohio, is an element, and the question is, is it non-essential? Well, I'd say Farm Co probably has one main office, so therefore this must be redundant. If this maybe if this said Farm Co's office, which is located in Ohio, might be an essential because you're not sure which Farmco office you're talking about, but I assume they only have one main office, so in my opinion, this would be a non-essential. Remember on the video that I had about grammar, sometimes the difference between a non-essential or essential may be hard to determine. But in this case, I'm calling this a non-essential. So therefore, since we've determined it to be a non-essential, it is separated with commas. Keith, next example is Keith moved to New York in 2013 when he was 23. I assume we know who Keith is, and we, and we would assume maybe we know approximately how old Keith is, so we would be able to determine if, if who Keith is, and if he moved there in 2013, we would probably know his approximate age. That's why this we are saying is non-essential. Maybe this sentence says Keith moved to New York. This didn't happen in 2013 when he was 23. That would make this, this right here, this uh, subordinate clause, or this dependent clause, because this is a subordinate conjunction, probably make it uh, essential. Some more examples of a verbal phrase. The document, written before Tom's death, states he borrowed the money. So I'm saying this is based upon the context or whatever. I've identified the element and I identify the element as a as a non-essential. Therefore, I've separated it because it's mid-sentence with commas. Sam applied at Stanford, graduating high school last May. So I've identified this verbal phrase at the end of the sentence. I've identified it as a non-essential, and I've separated it with a comma. Some uh, prepositional phrase examples. Linda's condition, on the whole, is improving. And I'd like to point out that uh, usually these mid-sentence ones, if I actually go back, if you look at the pattern, is that they're actually coming usually between the subject and the verb. If I back up, here's the subject and here's the verb. It's actually coming between the subject and the verb. Where was I? Oh, well, 
Well, I didn't mean to go that far, but uh, I can just go to the next one because it's the same thing with put, put out the end of sentence. But you can see these mid-sentence ones actually coming between the subject and the verb. I think this is very common. You have almost uh, effectively a, a non-essential element interrupting the sentence between the two. So, Linda's condition on the whole is improving. Proving. This prepositional phrase is uh, non-essential, or we've identified it as non-essential, therefore we're going to separate it with commas. Mid-sentence, and here it is at the end of the sentence, and we've separated it with a comma. I mean, technically, if this if you didn't put commas here, you were saying that this, this on the whole is essential to the meaning, and maybe something would say there's a reason why. Transitional or parenthetical expressions. I studied hard for the exam. The results, however, showed uh, showed not hard enough. Now, I actually s said this before. You can actually identify a, trans a transitional or conjunctive adverb because you can slide it around. Because this, you, so the person could have said, I studied hard for the exam. However, the results showed not hard enough. Remember, I've said you could actually move that around in the sentence, and here's an example. So if you were to say it somewhere else in the sentence, um, this becomes a, a effectively a non-essential um, uh, transitional expression, and it has to be in its mid-sentence, so you have to separate it with commas. Another example is, rather not attend the party to tell you the truth. This parenthetical has is not essential to the meaning of this sentence. Clearly, um, you know, you, then you have to separate it with a comma. A positives. Use a comma in a sentence or commas mid sentence to separate a non-essential a positive or an a positive adjective. Wow, what's an a positive? Now, I know in a previous previous video I said it. That's just something that follows something that renames it. So here's here's a, maybe a more technical definition. And a positive is a noun or phrase. It's a noun or phrase that renames the preceding noun or pronoun. So an example is, I've received a letter from Jim, my younger my youngest brother. This, my youngest brother, is actually in a positive, which is just renaming the previous noun. So remember, the positive in blue is just a noun or a phrase that's renaming the preceding noun. So I received a letter from Jim, comma, my youngest brother. Now, if it's not essential, we, um, we separate it with a comma. If it is essential, we, so we don't use a comma. So and here's some advice on how do you know if it's essential or non-essential. Well, well, remember, it's all about is it essential to the meeting um, or is it just adding information? And um, one tip is if, you, if a proper noun like Jim is followed by an appositive, then the appositive is probably non-essential because Jim is usually a proper noun is usually defining something specific. So a lot of times the information that follows is just a non-essential positive. It's not always true, but generally true, I've noticed. Just a tip. So some non-essential positive exam or non-essential positive examples. Mr. Cooper, my psychologist, saw me on June 12, 2007. Obviously, we know who Mr. Cooper is, or Dr. Cooper. So, this my psychologist is just, this is the renaming, the appositive, uh, Dr. Cooper. Now, it's not helping to define or restrict Dr. Cooper, so therefore, it's not essential. Dr. Cooper of We Care Health is my doctor. Now, you could say of We Care Health, it doesn't really sound like an appositive. And this, I believe, is um, a ex good example of another um, elliptical type phrase. It's someone has shortened this. 
So you say Dr. Cooper of, of We Care Health. This is probably a, um, an elliptical phrase. Of the phrase of We Care Health is, is, is probably an elliptical phrase for possibly a doctor with We Care Health. Or something similar. But basically, however you want to debate this grammatically, this is just in a positive renaming Dr. Cooper. Bazine ware, hopefully I'm pronouncing that right, a dark stoneware has has been pro pro produced in Japan for centuries. Now notice, going back to my uh, tip, is that if you have a, if you actually have a, you know, like a proper noun, followed by the appositive, it's probably non-essential. If we already know what this bazine ware is, then a dark stoneware is just, you're just, you're not, helping to restrict or define it or anything. This is just added, just added words. If you reverse these, or it's dark stoneware, bizonware, that would be like an essential positive if you were to flip these. Some more examples, some examples of some essential positives. My sister Jane Anderson is an attorney. Now, hopefully, does it just have a... Uh, oh, yeah. So I'm going to back up and say, my sister Jane Anderson is an attorney. Now, uh, if I had three sisters, this is definitely a... Uh, this is definitely essential because uh, you don't know which sister you're referring to. But if I only had one sister, then this right here becomes uh, non-essential. That's what I'm saying. This is common. If you only had one sister, the punctuation would be my my sister, comma, Jane Anderson's attorney, because you only have one sister. Therefore, this has to be redundant and can't be adding. It's just adding information. It can't be helping to uh, d define or limit because you only have one sister. Was the defendant, Mr. Smith, home at the time? Now, I'm listing this as essential, but once again, if you only had one defendant, this Mr. Smith becomes uh, non-essential. But in this case, if there's obviously multiple defendants, then Mr. Smith is actually an essential because you don't know which defendant it is. It's helping, you know, if you have multiple defendants, then this right here is defining which defendant. So that makes it essential. But if there's only one, then this is just added, it makes it not essential. That's what I say here. If there's only one defendant, then the punctuation should be was the defendant, comma, Mr. Smith, comma, home at the time. So it really depends on context, of sometimes of how these um, positives, if they're essential or non-essential. Context, things, you know, uh, uh, and I'm not even made talking about the immediate context, you're talking about the context of the entire proceeding. A positive adjectives. So an a positive ad adjective is just, you know, we already said a positive follows something. So an a positive adjective is just an adjective that follows a noun. They're always separated with commas. Because in English, an adjective precedes the noun. But you can't have an adjective that follows a noun that's called an a positive adjective. And they're always separated with commas. Why? Because technically they're just adding information. An adjective is just really describing a noun. So Jim was a big boy, tall and strong. Jim was a big boy. I mean, this is just, it's not defining. You know, this is not the defining big boy. Maybe you could say, well, technically it is, but it's not, it's just renaming it. It's not uh, restricting it. Maybe I can just say, a positive adjectives are always separated with a comma. I love steak, lean and tender, served with a Caesar salad. I mean, lean and tender is not defining steak. Steak's already defined. So that's, that's it for this video. Please subscribe. If you like the video, please hit like. 
and please buy the ebook. Thank you.